morning potatoes. Hmm, what should we bring? Dude, this chard is as big as my face. Holy cow. Kale and some fresh sorrel. Now that's my kind of bouquet. definitely blowing out of the north so and I don't see the altitude so this is surface winds so we may be getting blown toward Oregon <laughs> on our trip most of our trip there goes the plane we're supposed to take just kidding no I'm just kidding come back, come back the forecast for each of the airports that we'll be crossing over shows sky clear and over six miles visibility uh, looks like they're forecasting winds from the northwest 10 to 15 knots so we'll have a decent headwind that's what i want to pay attention to so that'll affect our ground speed which will affect the amount of time we're in the air and that's why i want to pay attention to that and make sure we have enough fuel Here, so this probably sounds better in your left ear. Will be uh, like now it's quieter. Yeah. We're now it's louder. Now gotcha. Okay. Okay. So left and right. Okay. Is Ephrata where we plan to make a fuel stop if needed? Um, that or Ellensburg. We'll be going right by both. Okay. Ellensburg has cheaper fuel. Our plan is to contact uh, Seattle Center pretty much once we're off the ground, and we'll do that on 123.95. Nine or eight taxiing from transient to runway two for run up if we're clear. Check on final here. Nobody on approach. So we're going to stop on the runway and we're going to actually go full RPMs and then we'll release the brakes. And we're going to rotate at 70. Adam Cowboy. <laughs> we're actually going straight if you look down. If you look behind us, the runway is straight behind us. Wow. So I activated our flight plan, keeping an eye out for traffic. We're through a thousand feet, so if we have an engine issue, we're gonna head back to the airport. And we're gonna climb up to 6,500. That's where we're gonna start, and let's just see how bumpy it is. As Jesse recently got his private pilot's license, it was time to take our first trip together to see what it's like and give Jesse some time behind the yoke. We decided to go to Seattle to see our friends for a day because why not? We packed overnight bags just in case we were too tired to fly home or had enough for one day and just because it's a good idea when traveling a long distance. But we were hoping for clear blue skies, nothing too exciting and a great day in the air. Hey, we're en route to Papa Lima Uniform. We'll be requesting flight following. 1696866766. And then H U M P P Hump. I can see why you need to fly the plane in your sleep to do a cross country. Like, there's so much going on. Yep. challenge with summer flying in the northwest is forest fires. 
Not only can they reduce visibility, as we dealt with on this trip, but often there are restrictions around the areas for safety reasons, making navigation challenging. Fires are something to take into consideration when planning trips and routes. Doesn't look like a big fire. Nope. Seattle Center, Skyhawk, 106, 9 or 8. We're going to climb up to probably 8,000, trying to get over some smoke from a fire over here. Or 106, 9 or 8, so Roger. As a passenger, this flight was enjoyable because I got to see a lot of the things real time that Jesse was talking about after all of his cross country trips, such as what it means to have flight following. As I understand it, this can be extremely helpful as a new or solo pilot to have somewhat of a helping hand in the air and an extra set of eyes on potential threats such as other aircraft in the area. Find the plane is somewhat of an exhilarating game for new pilots and passengers, and they're always way smaller than what you would think. Seneca 0902, traffic 12 to 1 o'clock, 6 miles, opposite direction at 8,500 Cessna Skyhawk. Was that somebody? Uh, Seneca 0902, booking. Skyhawk 968, traffic 12 to 1 o'clock, 7 miles, Seneca, opposite direction 9,500. Looking for the traffic, 698. So he's a thousand feet above us, and he's six miles roughly at one o'clock. So you're I would looking say, at like oh, eleven o'clock. Yeah, sorry, you're right. So one o'clock. So a thousand feet above us. How oh, about six miles out? That's pretty tiny, but right. he's closing quick. I can't even tell like how high up to look. Yeah. So a thousand feet's not going to be very high. Just a little bit. Bugs on the windshield don't help. Nope. There weren't any when we started. So what do you do? So that's him? Yep. Went right over the top of us. That was six miles? That's how quick, because we're doing 110, 120 miles an hour, and he's probably doing 140 miles an hour, so we're closing at 250. Right, no factor. So the rule is, when you fly west, you fly even thousands, plus 500. When you fly east, odd thousands, plus 500. The way you remember that is that people in the east are odd. Works pretty good. How do people in the east remember it? I don't know. I feel like you can't let your guard down when you're flying, but to be fair, you shouldn't let your guard down when you're driving either. Yeah, but but, it gets to be second nature, just like driving, I'm But sure. it takes two seconds for someone to come into your lane and you're not paying attention, where in theory, yeah. in theory, no one should be running into us. Right. And someone's telling you if someone's in the area, in theory, doesn't mean don't look, but... According to this, that traffic's over 12 miles away now. 7,500, so he's coming straight at us. So he's only like a thousand feet below us, right? Yep. Seattle Center, 698. We have no visual on traffic. Can you update us on their location? Skyhawk, uh, 968. Uh, it looks like you made a little bit of a turn, certainly at about 11 o'clock and 8 miles at 7,500. Okay, so about 11 o'clock here and 8 miles. So um, that's pretty low, but there must be just over the mountains. As we crossed over into the Cascades, things got exciting. I couldn't decide if I was nauseous or not. Despite fairly smooth air, the temperature dropped quite a bit and traffic definitely increased. The Cascades were just stunning from above, but it was a little bit of an eerie feeling as well versus flying over wide open spaces where there's seemingly endless places to land. Mount Rainier was just beautiful from afar and really hard to miss. Traffic was insane as we got closer to Pierce County Airport, also known as Thune Field. Pierce County traffic, that's the 3 1 Alpha. Got one on final. Base final, 3 5 full stop. So I got one on final. Oh, uh, one right in front, 12 o'clock. Yep, got one on uh, 12 o'clock. Good. So that one. Pierce County traffic, Cesta 3 1 Alpha. Clear. And he's passing underneath our wing there, so we'll go ahead and uh, hold off for now. Got some kid on the radio that they're feeding commands to. Yep. Pierce County traffic, Sky 106 9 turning final 3 5, full stop. Pierce County. Dusty 
down here at the... Hey, up here, Scotty, Scott. I totally like double fisted that landing. <laughs> one to hyperlapse and one to 60 peak. Nice. Pierce County traffic, Skyhawk, 10698, clear the active. We'll be taxiing to the FBO. Pierce County. Oh, dang, it's hot. So how do you know where to park? Is that information of four flight? Like where you can leave the plane? Uh, Pierce no. County, Skyhawk, 520 is turning left base for 35 Pierce. Um, it'll be at the FBO. So what we do is we go here, airports, go taxiways. So here we are huh. on the taxiway, and here's oh, Safety cool. and Motion Flight Center. They're the FBO, so they'll have transient parking. That's them right there. Oh, uh, it might be. Um, let's see. That's totally them, I think. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> good job. Did you think we'd make it? I did. Uh, I thought we'd make it. Your palms are a little sweaty. <laughs> that's hot down here. <laughs> it is. It I had a full blown winter jacket in my lap in the air and then like a denim on. And now it's roasting again. I think that's why I'm born to fly, because it's always cold up there. Great. The higher you go, the colder it gets. I think that's my That's pretty good. Yeah, down We here went it's for hot. a little evening flight together, and then boom, three hour flight one way. So, Do it. I think our friends are over there waiting at the gate. They have that like look about them, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> for the record, the booster seat is awesome. So, we went to the FBO, and they said park. Over here. Any right, of the open so spaces, but not their open spaces, our open spaces. So we have to move. So we've got to move the aircraft. I, I don't like the rope thing. Like Did you see they have private pilot certificates for sale? Looks like it. Like, you just buy, buy one. one. Yeah, like, why go through all the hard work? How much are they? 10 grand? I don't know. I wanted to go look, <laughs> but got distracted. Yeah. It's been a good flight. It's a little breezy down here. Which is funny, because when I checked the weather, it said wind's going right. That's why, like, weather's just weather. And then you just get down there and see what it's really like. I'm the most proud of you. Why? Because you just went three hours in an airplane and didn't have to go pee. I didn't. That's because, like, I couldn't tell if I was nauseous or not, so I just didn't drink any water, didn't yeah. drink coffee. Conserve, conserve. Also got a little quiet after uh, Deer Park. Yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. As long as she made it. She's she's a tough trooper. And we got, we got dodged by about 10,000 airplanes, so all is well. All right, I'll move the plane if you want to kind of unload a little bit. Yeah, what do you think? I think yeah. we we'll probably just bring our bags. Yeah, I if you want to grab a bag or two, I'll just move the plane, then I'll grab whatever's left and if meet you guys over reason, there. For some reason, we end up staying the night here, then we all yeah. have to come back to the plane. Yeah, so we'll I walk think... the plane completely, no matter what. Yeah, I feel good enough to fly home, but cool. let's still just bring all of our stuff. Yeah, we got a really late start, We don't so... know what kind of fun they have in store for us. We need to yeah, be prepared. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we didn't bring our tool belt, so can't have that much fun. Oh, I'm a sad wrinkle garden bouquet. Oh, I don't survive aviation well. I it's, don't like being wrinkled. It's the altitude. It's really just Jesse's look at, landings. Look at poor me. Oh, oh. Jesse was a better pilot. I wouldn't have to be all wilty. Hopefully they'll still like him. To be fair, Sorrel looks <laughs> wilty when it's looking really it does. good. It totally looks wilty. It's a, so it's a very flaccid Hopefully plant. they'll still appreciate the gesture. Oh yeah. <laughs> but the, the we, huckleberry jam, no oh, problem. Oh yeah, that didn't wilt at all. Nope. We may have Welcome. brought you some fresh nice. greens. The Except thing is, it doesn't uh, like aviation. They that don't looks fly like altitude well. sickness. <laughs> yeah, it's mostly my landings. It's the but takeoff was fine. They were looking really good till we came over I the think mountain. I think if they nice. put in water, they'll kind of revive themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. But the jam well, made it. We're gonna the be the people with the care. vase. Yeah, we're gonna have right. that sitting in a vase. Yes. It'll yeah. Be perfect. <laughs> this is proof we came here, we saw someone, we did something. Yes, Even we saw we the mountain. You took time off. 
It does exist. <laughs> Contrary to the locals' belief most of the year. Right. Brian, if you could not tear the plane up before we leave, that'd be great. Modification, it'll give you more wind speed. Wind speed. Ground speed. Ground speed. There you go. It's time to go home. We made it. We came. We saw them. They do live we here. Conquered. They're real. They do have a house. They are not complete house construction nomads. And uh, we are bringing back. It's not contraband because it can be purchased at Winco. Right. But we just don't have a Winco. We don't have a Winco. Therefore, they do. it could be considered contraband. Anyway, we better get home because it's going to get dark before we get home. And. Uh, Gotta get over the Cascades. Yeah, there's mountains between us and home, so I don't know about you, but my night mountain flying is a little rusty. such a great visit with our friends. One idea we like the most about having the ability to fly is that mileage doesn't have to stand between us and those we care about. Maybe easier said than done at times, but sometimes a day trip compared to a two or three day trip can make all the difference. The flight home we got to share one of the most epic sunsets we've ever seen. Experience total darkness together and admire the intermittent twinkling lights from cities and towns below. A great day, a great flight, and a great visit with friends in the books. This kind of trip is fulfilling to the soul, and it was just the pick-me-up we needed to balance out the stress of our home build. Until next time, plane. Until next time.